I chose GCSE, GCSE art because I like to draw, I like to paint, I like to get messy. When I was offered straight for a GCSE, I had to take it, I loved it. There's a lot of feelings in art, um, especially happiness and sadness, but also confusion in abstract art. What I'm quite fascinated by uh, in looking at the contextual studies element of the scheme of work is the possibilities of uh, juxtaposing two artists from different times and from different backgrounds and putting them together and kind of matching them up in some way. And I like the idea of taking something like Franz Klein's New York paintings, large monochromatic paintings, and then seeing how that can actually link up with a sculptor uh, like Anthony Caro and hey, is there something that we can learn from that to, to pull it all together? Advanced skills art teacher Rod Hepworth introduces the work of Franz Klein and Anthony Caro to his Year 10 GCSE group at St Christopher's okay, School, so Accrington. And why this artist? Rod makes a connection between the two contemporary artists as he encourages pupils to use their 2D drawings as a basis for 3D structures. We're going to build a tower out of the, all the stools in this room. When we've done that, we're going to work on the floor on some very large pieces of brown wrapping paper. Got some big graphite crayons, lots of charcoal. The next step is we're going to think about how do we convert something from 2D to 3D. What do we mean by 2D? Flat. Flat. Yeah, two dimension. <laughs> what do we mean by 3D? It's got more than one side. Um, it's like touchable and it stands out. It's touchable, it stands out and also it can stand up. We're going to lie our wood over our drawings and pick up the kind of basic shapes. We'll fasten them together Plenty of nails, hammers, hot glue, whatever we want to use, so that we've got a two-dimensional piece of sculpture, flat. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you to work in either twos or threes to try and decide how we can make it really freestanding. Uh, and then we'll come back and have a look at it and see if we can learn anything from the lesson that Anthony Caro's work shows us. I've always liked doing like practical things and things with colour. I've learned about the artist, how he built sculptures and basically 3D and monochrome. Why stools and why this artist? What he did, he did a drawing of a chair uh, in, in charcoal and then put some ink on it, projected it up very large onto a big canvas and then started to paint it. And most of his paintings are in monochrome. Mono meaning one. Chrome actually comes from the Greek chromas. Chromatic means colour. We're going to be inspired really by the way that he's tackled his uh, paintings there this morning when we're going to draw our Tower of Stools. I'm going to leave you now as a, a team to build uh, a nice big tower. OK, go to it then. Come on, team, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of looking up to it and then you start to see all these uh, angles. Because of the way it's constructed, they're all reasonably straightforward angles. So the thing we're going to concentrate on, really, is that the black lines uh, of the stool legs. Right, so if you want to come and take a piece of paper... Can I just say that most of you are working too small? because you're quite close up to these things and these things are really big. It's hard to capture it.
because there's so many legs and you can't see which one joins to which. Take a piece of charcoal, uh, you know, and sort of strengthen up some lines like that. We'll kind of pick up big areas. I'm trying at the moment to get the baseline all together and then work up from that. I'm going to work up from all of it. Like, just put the lines. I'm not going to bother with the shading like I did at the beginning. I'll just go straight on to putting all the lines together. I think I'm doing all right. It's, it, it's a bit difficult, like, getting all the lines and stuff, but yeah, it's going all right, yeah. What I'd like you to do now, it's called negative space. And look at the space between the, the chair, so the space that it's making, almost like in silhouette, if you look at the, the shape in between, and we'll, afterwards we'll think about filling in some of those spaces uh, and thinking about them as sort of areas rather than just linear. OK, so a bit like uh, Thomas here, we've just started to look at the space in between. It's hard to draw a straight line when you're um, with this, but you have to have two arms and you could probably get a steady line, but it looks all right. And then after, I want to do this uh, negative with the um, silhouettes inside, I'm going to fill in most of the spaces because it looks like it's shadowed then. I need to like kind of fill the whole page because I had to start again, I had to... I didn't fill up in a frame but I'm going to try and make it a bit bigger. It is actually quite difficult and like, I'm using graphite to do the metal bit of the stone and the wood I'm doing um, with the white charcoal to tone it out. If you want to dismantle the tower, it'd be nice if you've got your phone, just to, to take a quick snap. It could be a piece of homework, you know, you could do it, take it home, working your sketchbooks on it, that would be quite nice. It's like Franz Klein, almost like Franz Klein pictures, aren't they? As you go between those, just looking at those uh, still. I think there's fundamental differences between ongoing evaluation of a piece of work and an end of project evaluation. But if you get them to assess it as they're going through the process and maybe say, well, OK, stop now, do an assessment. Is it going in the right direction or do we need to perhaps go back and rethink it? Uh, it's going well, but I started off too small, so I restarted it. Seems to me it's only really uh, of any great value if you can let that inform the work as it's going through the process and, and therefore perhaps improve the work or encourage students to widen their perception of what they might be doing. I've done all right actually, I've just been experimenting. We're going to stop and we're going to switch from two dimensions to three dimensions. If we just use Vicky's as an example, what you could start to do is you could start to pick out some of the kind of key lines that have gone in there and sort of extend them and bring them down here. And good idea for using uh, charcoal is to use it on its side like that rather than on its end, because you can keep those. And if you just spend sort of 20 minutes doing that and extending everything right out to the edge of the table until you've got a lot of crisscross lines, then what we're going to try and do, we'll, we'll start to look again at this morning, I talked about negative space, and take some chalk and kind of identify some of that negative space by filling it in, which is making us look at the, the space in between things and not the, the lines. Or possibly, if you want, we'll get some uh, fairly dry brushes and dry white paint and we could perhaps paint in some of those spaces. Yeah. We're now going to enlarge and simplify and fill some spaces. This is a really strong piece and one of the things we can do is we can trim them off afterwards anyway. So just think about uh, negative spaces, I identified some of them. Do you know in the picture? Yeah. It shows the purple but like blending in with the white, like fading. So should I do that with the blue? You could do, yeah. The blue emphasises all the spaces in between. Instead of just being like plain, it makes it stand out more. So then you're not just looking at the main drawing, you're looking at the background as well. It's coming together now. So before it was just like a mess of just stools and it didn't really look like anything. Well, I want to add another colour instead of blue, like a red, just to lighten it up a bit. It looks a bit dull at the moment. It's meant to be monochrome, Chloe. I like it bright. <laughs> kind of looking at it from here, it really does, it kind of makes it look like the tower, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like stacking up. So maybe what you could do with some of your ink, you could just bring some of those across and link those 
up a little bit to just to kind of tie it, tie it together. I'm going to black out some of the other big sections in the blue or the white, which makes it stand out a lot better than it did at the beginning. So I like it better than I did at the start, anyway. Now I'm adding colour and texture onto it, it does look good and I can see the tower effect building up like I wanted it to. But what I've been really struck with as you look at the work on the table is uh, the fact that we've got these um, Franz Klein paintings scattered around and just how relevant these pieces of work have become. Some uh, obviously a lot more so than others but nevertheless we, what we've learnt about the way that he approaches his work and it's come through quite nicely in our own. So we've got really what is the starting point for our, our sculpture. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by thinking about collecting some pieces of wood and just seeing how we can relate uh, the pieces of wood to some of the structures that we've already got. What we're going to do uh, now um, is we're going to think about the problems about how we put together our individual pieces, which we could call a sub-assembly, uh, and how we put it together to make a finished freestanding piece. And I just wanted to show you two uh, examples here of very early Anthony Caro uh, pieces. And whilst they don't look uh, identical to what we've been producing, you can see the link there in so much that they're self-supporting, they're three-dimensional, you can walk in and around them. So it's hard to um, attach it all. And you couldn't do it on your own because otherwise I won't. I like the way that this, the uh, people who worked on this have just chosen to use the cable ties uh, almost as part of the piece of the sculpture. They've just tied it all together with it, which is, which is really quite interesting. All we need to do now is to kind of take on board what we've achieved. It's a great piece of sculpture. It'll look even better when we've got it painted. And I just think you need to have real ownership and be proud of what it is you've produced. I wanted them to see the problems of how do you make that piece of work stable? How does it stand up? And how do you work in conjunction with somebody else? And I think the beauty of today's uh, assignment, really, was that everybody managed to come together quite cleverly and suggest ideas and then put them into practice. I've learned how to do structures because in the past we've never actually done structures. We've only done like layout 2D and basically teamwork because you usually do it solo. You can start off from just doing like line drawings from in 2D to change them into 3D by using like the blocks and making them stand out with the dark black lines. Oh, look, sir, I've stood it up.